Hello everyone, this is a great shot one seven bring you another company for real street play. Uh brought to you by let's see now. Uh yes, Panzerburger and Herodon versing Gubhead and Wink. Hopefully I'm getting that right. Let's double check their ranks real quick. Not too bad. Alright, and I am going to again do this in front of you guys just to show you where my audio settings are. Because I know some of you guys complained about my audio settings being low. And I'll turn it up slightly. But the thing is, again, I, I will restate this. I would rather have a game in which you guys can hear me, not just guns firing and other things. So I'll increase it slightly. But overall, I try to keep my audio settings down. And I kind of tweak with it as well. That was a big comment I just had on my last replay. So, you know, I'll, I'll listen to you guys. I'll listen and I will change it slightly. But again, if it's too loud, well, or if it's off, well, now you guys know. In any capacity, we have Herodon picking the guard mortar coordination tactics. Uh, let's see, he went with the T-3045. I mean, it, that kind of leads with that. It has some heavy infantry, which is pretty good. And overall, versing two Vermont players, that can be very, very good unless they get some heavier armor. And judging by the fact that all of these guys have heavy armor, you can tell that this is going to be an issue. <laughs> Um, I mean, Mark Target can kind of even out the playing field, but we shall see. Panzerberger again went British and went two Vermont. They should be able to combat the Vermont pretty easily. Uh, Vermont don't have the heaviest of armor that the OKW have or the entrenchment capabilities, but they're high, they're more mobile and they can be a big, big uh, issue. Now, as you can see here, this guy is spamming Pioneers and MG42s. Could be a big issue, especially if we can see here. The Soviets, I see a lot more players going penals. And I like that because, again, heavier infantry, very powerful with flamethrowers, can really burn uh, guys and buildings down pretty quickly. Plus, you have the satchel charge. And, oh my god, I just recently watched uh, Hacksaw Ridge. I don't know if this replay is going to come out before or after the review comes out for it. But, uh, oh wow, uh, just, a, just a new meaning to satchel charge with that film. Anyway, MG in this building, suppressing the... Pioneer squad. No, I mean the Pioneer Engineer squad. But actually, if you can see here, out of range. So actually, these guys will be able to decap that fuel point, and this MG is screwed. Now again, you could be you say, "Great shot! This is a great building for defense." Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, this one would have been better, because this we can again. You can block. I I think you can block. Yeah, you can block on the side. You can block in the front. You can block on the other side. You can block from behind, and that'll just stop the Engineer squad from really pushing forward. Now, Pioneer Squad moving in, again, because these guys have no cover, and these guys are better close range, the Pioneer Squad should annihilate the Engineer Squad, although it, it's, you know, it could go either way. But as you can see here, pretty much Pioneer Squad doing pretty good. And yeah, the Engineer Squad's gonna get the hell out of there. Oh, no, there, there's another Pioneer Squad. Is that three squads? No, just two, I was gonna say. Let's see, in mid, we have this guy, uh, really not much. A lot of excess manpower. Again, these guys are in high ranked as the last game with my Vet 5 Kubel, which I find awesome. Thank you again for sending me that in. Uh, it will send me that replay. But yeah, let's see. Defense here. Again, good choke points. You could easily, if you're holding the bottom, could easily isolate the Germans through these points right here. Um, we'll see what happens. Penal squad moving in. Again, very heavy infantry. Can easily fight Grenadier squads. So, I love how he's like, we're going to run all the way around here instead of just running back through here. Because that would have been safer. Now, he's probably going to kill this Grenadier squad if he... Nope, he's not going to focus fire on it. Really surprised. You figure he would. But again, really nice flank coming around this way. The MG couldn't turn fast enough. And with uh, penal squadrons... Mo squadrons? <laughs> penal squads moving up, uh, most likely he would have been uh, unable to really uh, hold off all that infantry so what do we have here um a lot of frontline infantry a lot of defensive infantry and is that a bunker no it's a fuel cache right now i see the allies actually being able to keep pushing forward because of the fact they have so many units and they're so mobile that the vermont will probably be unable to really stop them because again mg stops them here they can move up troops this way which again they have Okay, there we go. He's going to move around and flank this MG. And if he's smart, which I have a feeling he is, he's going to throw a satchel charge. But we shall see. And uh, we'll even see if this guy is aware of that. And also we can see another engineer squad moving around. He did move an MG in here, so most likely 
yeah, he's going to be suppressed. Or he could place a mine down, one of the two. Okay, here's the thing. You're flanking, that's smart, but maybe heavy cover? Or maybe the MG was blocking, that's actually going to have been worse, never mind. Because I'm just seeing negative covers, pretty much a negative thing. Especially with the uh, support weapons teams, like the excess men. Because those guys are actually start opening fire, can actually do a decent amount of damage. And you don't capture that, alright. Down south, the... Uh, Wow, okay, nice rifle grenade. Jesus. <laughs> there goes some British infantry. Um, managed to take this point and most likely would keep pushing the British player back. Though, mortar uh, pit, which will be very, very helpful at holding back in the infantry in the entire sector. So, again, it can pretty much help out from the bottom tier to the upper tier locations. So, it should be pretty good. Now, it looks like Gubhead is rushing for some heavier infantry to combat the penal stuff. That's fine, but... Panzer Gradiers are really good close range and kind of medium, where Penals are good, very good close range with the flamethrower, and very good medium range and even sometimes long range with their rifles, depending on who they're fighting. And a Panzer Grenadier squad is something that they would have better, uh, they would have a better advantage over because it is close range. So, there's that. Uh, let's see, Penals on retreat. No real defense in mid. Where's that MG? Kind of down south? Yeah. He is laying mines, smart guy. Again, make sure that they can't charge down here with a bunch of the units. Have some mines on st on backup, so if they do charge, they, you know that they'll at least take some casualties. Or they have to get a minesweeper, which, as we can see, this guy doesn't have even an engineer. So most likely, that's not going to be the case. He probably could upgrade this unit with a Panzer Shrek. And now he could do a little bit more damage. He's probably going to throw a bundle grenade, which would be the obviously the wrong move to do. Okay, yeah, and he's just going to open fire. Until, unless you get the special um, advanced emplacements, gunfire still hurts these things. Which people kind of forget, but whatever. Um, doesn't do nearly as much as, as, like, again, it could be effective. So, yeah, also, penal troops. I'm just saying, you have 170, you could have threw a penal charge there and blew this to kingdom come. And we have a flame unit over here. That could be effective at bringing the emplacements down. But we have a T-70, so it looks like he's going heavy infantry with a T-70 to fight that light armor. And honestly, that light armor can really, that light tank can pretty much fight the scout car and the half track. Now, what? let's see, Panzerberger, he's going to lose this, unfortunately. Again, he tries to get a squad in there to help, but it's not going to work. <laughs> I love how it just blows up. Yeah, of course, Michael Bay, when you shoot something with non-explosive rounds, it just blows up. Because science. Anyway, infantry, again, enough firepower can't hurt this thing, but overall, this thing actually is a decent enough armor that without AT, it can pretty much annihilate most infantry, unless there's so much it's under just a sustained fire. Uh, T-70 rolling up. Panzer Grenadier Squad is the biggest issue right now. They can't heal um, with the pan with the normal Grenadier Squad, so after that, Panzer Faust is pretty much screwed. But if they get a Panzer Shrek ability, that could pretty much annihilate the uh, T-70. But as we can see, it looks like he didn't get that upgrade. Yeah, he's not getting it. And T-70 will do enough damage to push that guy back. Actually, possibly kill it. Nope, very lucky the heavy cover took the shot. Now, resource-wise, again, it's kind of more lean to the Axis. And units-wise, the Axis are gaining more of an advantage. Uh, which is actually surprising, given the fact that the British actually had the advantage. And honestly, Panzerberger, I think you should have picked that commander a little bit sooner because that uh advanced repair would have probably helped kill, keep your mortar pit alive through active repairs um let's see we have a mine down here no real mine over here so they could honestly just flank through this way and take you out so that's an issue on the left hand side we have a yeah, bunch of panzer shreks again it's from what i can see these guys are going hey uh they have a lot of armor Let's get a bunch of Panzer Shreks so we can combat medium armor from the Allies. And that's not a bad strategy, but I'm not seeing a lot of very good, effective... Again, if you're going to substitute that, then those MGs and those light vehicles better be on point because the Panzer Grenadiers aren't going to be able to really fight infantry. Now, again, with the right now, again, it looks like his half-track, his MGs, is more than capable of holding back the penal squads. So, But, but uh, long range, again, we'll see. Oh my god. Sometimes they have a delay because of, uh, you know, something emer emergency happens. happens. Sometimes they have a delay because I find out something very important. Other times my brother gets his 
arm stuck in a shirt and I have to help him out. Oh my god. He's saying something right now, but of course you can't hear him. Anyway, penal I just, being... to, I just want to note, it was twisted underneath a tag. Therefore, no one cares. Move. Anyway, Everyone penal cares. troops moving up. They should be able to easily p fight this Panzer Deer squad, but they need to take out the MG. A uh, flank around this way with the T-70 could probably be the best thing to do. But Good question. Is there a five-star Kubel in this? No. Then I don't care. <laughs> My brother just walks out. See ya! Alright, T-70 moving up trying to knock out the scout car and the MG. Actually, if the MG was smart, it would actually be... Right, there we go. Armor piercing rounds. Boom, and doesn't do a lot, but it did a little bit. Plus, it would definitely help against the infantry, which is still there. All right. Poor, poor scout car. T-70 just working his way around. Uh, focusing on armor, probably should refocus on infantry. Could very easily kill this. Uh, AT gun, though, coming up. Again, bad positioning. Kind of the shrubs are blocking it, and yeah. There we go. I think he has sight. Boom, there we go. One more shot with the AT gun should kill it. Now, yep, he's going to take the long way. Rear shot, and there goes the T-70. Again, you if you see something like this, go sporadic. Kind of try to get out of its sight lines as quick as possible. If that means go gunning toward it, that may be what you have to do. But in that scenario, just going, like, it's like the scenario Prometheus. I, I love, again, for anyone who's watched these replays, I always like to compare and contrast. The scene in Prometheus where they're running in a straight line as the alien ship is coming down and you're like you know that if they turn like five feet right they would not be hit by it um the same thing could be said about battlefield players right now when a zeppelin comes down i swear to god i always see so many people die and i'm like you know you could just turn left right the, the only time that i can understand is when you're in a hallway in a building and it just like collapses and you just see the engulfing in fire straight down the hallway that's something that's like, oh my god. Speaking of oh my god, hey Panzer Grandier Squad, uh, I bet you didn't expect that to happen. Yeah, they're heavy infantry. That doesn't mean they can fight off a vehicle that specialized in killing infantry. Alright, and let's see. Re I should probably say their name. So Panzerberger, Herodon, Gubhead, and Wench? Wenk? Whatever. Went. Wench. Went. Went. When. I'll just say when. Um, when picked Lightning War, this will allow... Okay, this is weird. This is a weird upgrade. Uh, simply because of the fact that you can't, at least as far as I know, do both Jaeger, um, infantry upgrade with the G43s and the Panzer Shreks. At least I don't think. I know at least you can do it with one Panzer Shrek, but not two. Uh, nice satchel charge. Come on, get a nice hit. Ah, oh, beautiful. Just, just beautiful. Alright, so let's see. Falling back. Yeah, nice satchel charge. Really helped push them back. Artillery from the British guy's base also coming in. Kind of helping, uh, you know, make them fall back. The big thing is just like... Why? I, if you're going Panzer Grandiers, I don't think this upgrade is what you want. I could be wrong. Let's see what happens, but... Uh, we shall see as far as I'm concerned. Also, while you're getting a Panzer IV, this guy's like, I don't need armor, which is a big no-no. Of course you need armor. I mean, maybe he could go for the elephant. I'm not entirely sure. That could be a strategy, especially in mid. You could pretty much annihilate any armor in mid. But again, this map, there's literally three tiers, so they could easily flank around you. Uh, Centaur coming in, I guess, try to take out the ET gun. Probably be a good idea. Or just fall back into obscurity. That's also a strategy. We have another mortar emplacement down here. A little bit close to the front line. But you can see that this guy is placing a lot of mines. So if they do engage, they're going to either have a minesweeper or they're going to take a lot of losses. Now they do have a minesweeper. But A, doesn't mean he's going to use it. And B, that doesn't mean you can't do direct fire. You can tell armor to direct fire targets. So if you see them going over the mine, you can, act, you can blow up the mine and cause them to, uh, to pretty much get annihilated for anyone who's on the mine. This guy's running up. He's probably just waiting to try to get the special ability to call more artillery in. Uh, Panzerberger, do you have the 
Let's see. Yeah, you do have the company command post. So you have both artillery stations available. So they will start to hit the enemy with pretty much everything they got. Now, again, we have the Panzer IV rolling up. And as is the Vermont player, they, it's the normal Panzer IV. No extra armored skirts or special abilities. Just a normal Panzer IV. Which could easily, you know, fight off the Centaur. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going for. AT gun repositioning to push that thing back. But here's the thing. I'm not seeing any minesweepers. So I'm making the assumption that the Centaur is going to roll back. Nice bounce. And Panzer IV hits the mine. And if we had AT gun, you know, it... Wow, okay, man. Once again, guy flies like 40 feet. Um, if he had an AT gun, this would be a perfect trap. But he had nothing... Oh, here, here comes the AT gun. About, about 30 seconds late. So, yeah. Uh, you could probably get up there, get a, a shot or two at max, but most likely he's not going to be able to get there in time. And this thing's going to get away, get healed, and be good as new. They have three Pioneer squads on it. Unless they get a very lucky hit, it's not like, again, this thing will be back up in no time. Now, the Royal Engineer Regiment, I'm very curious, Panzerberger, why he went that. It's a good overall support doctrine, and the EVRE is pretty good against blobs. I can't denounce that at all. Nice hit with the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. They're falling back pretty quick. Um, but yeah, I just... I'm curious, because I'm, usually you get this if they're heavy emplacement spamming, or they get all, or the heavy urban maps, because they get a bunch of buildings. This is not really that. They haven't really used emplacements. I haven't seen a bunker for a Vermont player. Let's think about that for a second. A bu MG bunker. None. Kind of shocking. Um, so that special ability is kind of throughout the window. Sure, the vehicle repair stuff is great, but we'll, we'll see what you do with this. Um, also, you haven't really been using the command vehicle, which would probably be very, very helpful. Uh, wow, Firefly coming in. Very nice rocket strike. Blinding the tank, causing it to demobilize uh, or be immobilized if the t-34 would move up that probably would have killed it um they, do they have any AT? no they have no at there's a lot of panzer grenadiers but no at how much okay you don't have a lot you have 400 munitions you could get each of these panzer shrecks in one shot t-34 if you wanted to what are you doing uh but right now the allies have more of an advantage and again with the map we can currently see that Overall, the allies now have more resources. Again, the map will typically fluctuate back and forth, but for right now, the allies seem to be gaining more and more of an advantage. And just, again, think if this guy would have had Panzer Shrek, so he could have one-shot that T-34 and kind of helped turn the tide. Instead, he's charging forward, trying to kill, what, a mortar? Congratulations. It's probably... Yeah, you're not still, you're not going to be able to take it because the T-34 will one-shot it. You're going to try to steal it, aren't you? Well, you're going to lose that... You Oh, wow. Nice T-34 shot. There was one Panzer Grenadier squad. Can we go for two? Yep, we got two. I, I, yeah, I just, I don't understand what you're trying to do with that attack. Great, you killed the mortar, but they're easily going to re- As they so, the one team you don't ever try to sacrifice a unit to decap it, even though you know you're going to lose it, is the Soviets. Because Soviets are like, well, we lost the mortar. Get that conscript squad on it now. <laughs> Yeah, they can just reman it for cheap. That's what they do kind of really well. Now, we have a Stug and a Panzer IV on standby. So, overall, I feel like with these guys and the Panzer Shreks, the armor of the Allies is going to be in some serious trouble. The Firefly, though, could really do great long range. But over, you know, under sustained fire for a long period of time or just Panzer Shreks, probably not going to be, you know, doing all that well. T-34s, on the other hand, again, the Soviet might. They should be pretty good. And, wow, I just really noticed how badly textured that mountain is. Um, I think this was a mod map, so that explains it. But, yeah, the T-34 should be able to fight the Panzer IV mono -e mono especially with some Soviet support. So, we shall see. We shall see. With The Panzer Grenadiers are pretty much going to be the big what-if scenario. Uh, will the Allied infantry be able to tear this apart? Will the guards be able to just keep them back? Or is it just going to be... Uh, pretty much Panzer Grenadier annihilating enemy armor. Let's see, you with the elephant, which, once again, a, a good idea in theory, because again, it kind of goes hand in hand with the tiger. Tiger can take the shots where the elephant dishes out damage. Um, wow, really nice grenade. But, uh, yeah, just very curious about your strategy right now. Wow, we have Stugabomb coming in. 
Why the hell did you hit there? Of all places, the Stuka bomb. Were you worried about a mine? You know you could just use a mine sweeper, right? Doesn't cost 160 munitions. There was nothing here. Anyway, Firefly's on standby. They have the mortar pit here. Again, being buffed by the Ford Assembly, which he can now retreat to. This is where you want to hit. You can activate a recon plane, find out where they're retreating to, bomb it, and neutralize all the infantry as they retreat. Just saying, it's a dick move, but I am not... <laughs> but I will say I have used that move multiple times, and it has worked flawlessly, especially versing American blobs. That is the perfect enemy to fight. You want, you want to knock out the Americans? Retreat their forces, low recon, and let the Stuka do its job. So the heavy infantry I was talking about, the guards, pretty good against infantry, very uh, and very good against armor. Combined with the penal troops, which are very good against infantry, makes it a pretty good fighting force. Add them in heavy cover, and you have some very, very powerful infantry dug in, ready to fight some armor on a moment's notice. Um, the, the medium armor, and I guess the lighter armor variety, are on standby. Wow, nice job letting the allies get the Panzer Shrek. That won't come, bite, come back to bite you anytime soon, surely. But yeah, uh, also, probably would have helped if you guys got some, uh, one of the upgrades. Well, Stuka Bomb coming in, please hit here. Good Stuka Bomb, kill one unit, damage the other, so that was actually decent. It was definitely better than the first one. And that kind of crippled his infantry, falling that back. So he has a lot of T-34s. Oh wow, he has two T-34s and then the, uh, 85, which, interesting, we'll see how it goes. Oh, if they bring up an elephant, that's... Well, okay, so yeah. So Wench seems to be going on the mindset of, I'm going to mass produce, which I think probably at this point, uh, probably the bad theory is he's so close to getting the uh, tiger. He's going to go medium armor. And to be fair, that's a good, if you have a nice variety and well-supported uh, with infantry, that can be a good combo. And as you can see, he's doing just that. Gubhead seems to be of the mindset of, I'm going to save up for an elephant, and that's the only armor I'm going to get. Two different strategies, two different ways that it can backfire. With the light armor, if the opponent uses heavy armor, then you're screwed, especially if not supported. And then with Gubhub, since he has no support, if the heavy armored vehicle can't kill whatever it is very quickly, the elephant will be in totally, uh, pretty much encircled and neutralized very, very quickly. T3045 moving up, trying to, I guess, clear this MG. And at least that's a good thing about these T34s. He has so many of them, he can hit multiple different directions. And multiple different opponents in different... Wow, alright. In different areas. AT gun and Firefly just, once again, neutralizing the medium armor. Because that's what they're designed for. The AT gun, not so much, but the Firefly, absolutely. Just meant to pretty much pulverize that armor. Oswin barely makes out alive. AT gun hitting a stronger point, which is why it didn't do as much damage. AT gun, though, on standby. Most likely he was trying to bring that up to push back the Firefly, but... Firefly has some decent range, so you're going to have to pull it up a little further. Herodon, so it's a decent amount of good infantry, and plenty of engineers. I'd actually be... Oh yeah, he's placing mines. So, I do like the fact that both the Soviet player and the, um, the British player have been placing mines using that excess munitions to an advantage. So that way they can, um kind of make sure that they when they take territory it's held that's the biggest issue i find in games where people will take territory but they'll do nothing with it if you're gonna take a spot make sure that whatever you're taking it's worth taking and worth defending like for example steps it's a it's a it's a isolated closed off region of the map um on the, we'll call the island the steps has a part a portion of the island that's very easy to take hard to really uproot and if you can fortify it it's it, one person can easily hold back two plus players at that region whereas in the north you can't really fortify but you can have large swaths of armor moving through and just fighting uh, like huge armor battles and circling kind of like what's going on now but again t-34s have a harder time penetrating uh panzer four armor so we shall see to 85 not so much to the 76 yes MG barely surviving an assault from the guard troops will not be able to survive much longer elephants now up and we shall see how this goes uh, although AVRE coming up again Churchill can penetrate it but it takes a lot of shots 
as you can see, come on, fire. Oh, or miss, that's cool. Do you have the spotting scope on this? Yes, you do. So we can see very, very far. Uh, again, just for, just, just for, of course, just idea. You can see it's, you can see pr has a pretty good sight radius. Plus, add in with the extra infantry, and you can make sure that your elephant is able to hit targets pretty far. I love how it missed and almost hit the, the mortar and cannon. I've seen that before, where uh, there was a video I watched where a AT gun fired, missed the target, but hit a random katusha in the background. And the opponent was like, how the hell did you hit it, you cheater? And the person's like, what? And he went back to it and saw and he's like, oh, I didn't cheat. I just uh, got very, very lucky. Just like a plane crashing into your armored tank and causing it to die. Uh. Anyway, Firefly making quick work of the Stug. Stug doesn't have the sight radius. Firefly has all the advantage it needs and pretty much going to annihilate this thing. Once again, you got another... Yeah, curious. I mean, I think, okay, I think the awesome one was alive, but nice Stuka. Just like, the, the Mortar Encampment's like, no. And he's probably going to use the ability to quickly heal it. Now, the Elephant, of course, can be used to uproot it, and with its range, it's very hard to really combat that. The Firefly can fight it, like, range-wise, but the problem is you can't fight it armor-wise. A couple shots from the Elephant will tear a Sherman Firefly apart. So, something to keep in mind. Right now, the Allies control majority of the victory points and resource points, so the Axis need to start gaining ground. Big armor charge by the Soviet player, again, would be very helpful if you use Mark Target on the Elephant, and the Firefly would have quick work on There we go, that's teamwork. Anyway, AT gun, position a little too late. T-34 is just trying to get the Elephant to turn. Pretty smart, again, folk make the uh, British able to hit its rear. Nice AVR hit, talks about the AT gun. And oh my god, you do get your yeah, that's right, get your engineer squad, please steal it. Come on, steal it. AT gun's like, no. Oh, damn it. AT gun's like, no, you will not take it. If they would have stole it, I would have that that's instant GG. But right now, since again, uh, pretty much why would you keep your Panzer 4 here? Like, I'm sorry, you can just keep move up your units. What happened to all the uh Panzer Grandiers. Didn't this guy have a lot of Panzer Grandiers somewhere? Okay, here they are. Like, this is what you kind of needed to support your armor, but that all but all of that was just on the opposite side of the map. Like I said, if you're gonna have armor, make sure it's supported. You didn't really have that. I mean, like, you had a lot of armor, but think about if you would have had the infantry to back it up. Okay. Again, the tanks would have not been able to push, your armor would have not been, you know, freaked out, and you probably would have been better off. Um, that being said, we can see the, here the infantry most likely going to push this uh, the German infantry back. Nice AVRE shot. Help clear that position. And right now, yeah, the Vermok players are in kind of a dire situation where... They don't have a ton of resources. Wrench does, but he already has a decent army. Gubhead is the person where it's like, what are you going to do? Like, what, I what, what is your strategy? What is your plan? And I can't, and I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what his strategy is. I don't know what his plan is. Because his two columns have been okay. They haven't been really able to cripple enemy lines. And while the allies took some losses, but are slowly building that back up. Um, at this point, I think Wrench, uh, when Wench, whatever the hell, uh, would be better off getting a Tiger. And even though, again, you could say, oh, great shot, they have a lot of AT. Yeah, but if you equip that with the Panzer Grenadiers and have the Tiger soak up some damage, but the Panzer Grenadiers can fight the Fireflies and stuff, that's where you start getting into an interesting combination, especially with equipped with some AT guns, stuff like that, and uh, just have some basic, you know, good anti-infantry units as well you come into a formidable force that the allies may not be able to easily push back even with a firefly now two that it makes it tougher um, but again we see Herodon has been losing a lot of t-34 so he's not being able to keep them alive i mean t-34s are kind of designed with a ram ability to kind of be sacrificed for the greater good <laughs> but um yeah it's kind of a uh, interesting situation i see this demo charge here i swear to god he better use it like that'd be amazing if he ended up using this somehow it is moving up but 
again, we have the aviary right here. It's just going to prep and be ready to fire along these panzer grenadiers. Plus, again, this is a gun that can hurt them a little bit. And then you still have, uh, well, I would say the mortar support and the MG, but they, <laughs> they managed to not go where the MG is. So, yeah. They're probably going to be able to kill this AT gun, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, probably going to kill it. Oh, well. You tried. MG, again, kind of being blocked. So it was hard for the Panzer Grenadier. No, we saved it. Very lucky. Anyway, looks like a redistribution of their men. Kind of a, a double team. Uh, right now, it's it's difficult. Because with the mortar emplacement, it's hard for the Axis to push up. Because a lot of the infantry is going to be neutralized by it. Which is why, if that's the reason why you held the units back over here, then you may want to engage the enemy away from the hard points. And try to force them in a position where you can more adequately fight them. Um, and middle is not the kit where you want to fight them at. As you can see, uh, yeah, you're going to be screwed. Like, I know the Panzer, technically, the Panzer IV could f kill a Firefly, but it's more unlikely than it killing a Jackson. Um, Fireflies are just more powerful. Wow, nice aviary shot, just annihilating them. AT gun can do a few more shots, but no way he's going to do enough to kill a Churchill. So, there's that. I mean, if it does a stun ability, sure, but it's not near vet. It's not veteran, and uh, as you can see, three shots, and it's like, yeah, whatever, gonna roll away. Over here, again, Soviet guys moving up, trying to capture the fuel, knock out the vital resources that the Axis have left, and if you do that, you cut off their ability to counterattack effectively. We can see here that again, the Soviet player just like has an army of almost equal to the Axis. The Axis have a little more. But it's kind of scattered about. We do have a Tiger Tank rolling up. Wow, the Tiger Tank is actually a little weird with that skin. I'm going to be honest. But, um, if he uses it effectively, if he can control his units, then I can see it going very well. I just don't. Yeah. Alright, AT gun pushing him back with the Tiger. Mark target. This is where you need that additional support until that, you know, mark target dissipates, which will be some time. Uh, again, close to a minute. But, again, Tiger can still do a lot of damage. You need to move up the AT gun. Nice job with the AT and the Tiger. You can kind of move it back and forth so the T-34-85 has a harder time hitting it. Um, and, uh, yeah, at least it looks like they're able to recapture this territory. Wow, that balance shot on the marked target. Kind of rare to see. Uh, the Guard troops will still do damage versus the marked target, and more so because it is marked. But... On the flip side, and again, this is kind of the big thing. Um, it's still a tiger tank. So I'll, it, you may have nerfed its armor. It still has the big freaking gun that can do a lot of damage. So you have to be very wary. Now, this is a situation where they keep pushing up. And, uh, what, did he put demo charge? No, that's a panzer strike. But he did place demo charges near all these points. Man, that aviary is just... They, they just keep your squads away from this thing. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide all your infantry because this thing is annihilating the enemy. And again, if you see this thing, just keep mobile. It's very hard. As Sturm Tiger, it's a lot easier, but for an AVRE, it's harder um, to really fire and hit a target. And uh, especially if it's moving to make sure it stays in, uh, like, you get just right so it does damage. All right, Tiger on standby. Lots of demo charges, so I'm very curious to see if he does a big infantry push, which he doesn't really have a lot of Panzer Grenadiers left for that. Wow, Jesus. That one AVR. Yeah, I think it was AVR again. All right. Just uh, blowing up all the infantry. That's cool. That's how you demoralize your enemy. You just keep squad wiping them. And, they, and then eventually, and I'm, I'm being honest about the player, the player would be like, God damn it, I lost another squad. And then they have to bring out another fresh batch of recruits out. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. The problem is, well, the elephant, again, very good unit with marked target, makes it weaker. And with no support, what, what do you think it's going to do? And like, nice attempt, but uh, yeah, no support. So you're pretty much, whoa, that aviary shot. Holy mackerel. Hmm. That did uh, not go well for him. Did not go well. 
Now I'm going to make the assumption that this guy's going to charge and then he's going to be hit by one of the demos. I really want that to happen. I really do. Or that'd be amazing if he does mark target, the demo initiates, and it the extra bit, because he's marked, it does extra damage, just blows up the tiger. I always like that when, uh, oh god, what, what was it? A tell I activated Teller Mine, and I get this is light armor, but it's a similar situation where it's like I, I like I know the light armor that tank's gonna chase me down, try to kill my unit, position it just right, so he gets annihilated. T wow, that plane is like fuck you. I'm not going down without a fight. And almost dive bombs the tiger, barely misses. Satchel charge me just to knock out that infantry. Pretty good. Um. Tiger rolling up, but there's, again, too much AT and too much armor. At this point, it's really, you shouldn't be, like, doing a head-on assault. You kind of still have to be in, like, a hit-and-run type mindset because they, they just have so many forces, you're going to be instantly annihilated. And I assume the mark target's coming. No, he's trying to blitz away. T-34 is like, nuh-uh. I'm actually really surprised one of them doesn't just ram it so it can't escape, but... At, Again, there's so much fire power hitting it. Nice rocket just stops from retreating, and uh, yeah, that's GG. You can kind of make do if you have a har heavy armored vehicle, and you can kind of make sure if well supported, it kind of turns the tide. But it, with the army size that the allies have, and the allies, uh, the army size that the Burmok have, it's really not going to go very well. So, um, what did the allies do that the Axis failed? in this regard um first off again perfect example they failed to keep their units alive that avre did a great job along with all their mines and demos to keep annihilating those squads and they couldn't as you can see with their armies they don't have i mean like okay he has one vetted troop but they couldn't either keep their units alive or they're all recruits and that just decreased the effectiveness of those units compared to the allies where sure they lose units but they can at least keep them up at a better pace because, again, they were able to retreat and reinforce where the Vermok is just like, fuck, we lost another squad. <laughs> we can't we can't keep we can't keep doing this over and over again. Um, so on. OK, so honestly, how like what could the Axis have done to counter that? First off, stop engaging the Vermok. Um, stop engaging Vermok. Stop engaging the allies and had the allies engage you the allies did this massive assault against you and you really weren't prepared so in my mind if you can't handle a, a def if you can't handle a situation where you have an advantage how are you going to handle a situation where you have a disadvantage and there were certain occasions where they're doing okay but they never were able to really capitalize on that and that's the thing it's like they have an elephant and they have a tiger they still weren't able to capitalize on it they had a bunch of armor and an elephant and they weren't able to hold back the enemy just outmaneuvered them and, and used uh, tactical advantages uh, pretty much like the fireflies doing long range the mark target the weak in their armor the t-34s to flank around the advanced infantry to really combat the vermox advanced infantry just a wide range to really just hold the vermox back um the vermox didn't play terribly there wasn't like a situation where I'm just like oh my god you idiot um they did okay it's just Panzerberger did something very, very nice by constantly squad wiping them. I, again, I don't normally go with this doctrine, but I feel like with the AVRE in general, he was able to use that to his advantage. Um, and then Herodon, um, again, I think he just, he was like, well, I'm just going to use heavy infantry and spam T-34s. And you know what? The T-34s just, again, just like the Soviet industry in actual World War II, just overwhelmed the Vermont. The Vermont weren't able to keep up and have an armor capable of fighting that. When they did, they were just swarmed. And it's it's those moments where you're just like, Jesus Christ, there's not much we can really do. Um, but yeah, it, and finally my last mark is the British and Soviet player made it so that when the Vermont attacked their territory, that they lost units automatically through mines, it made it much more complicated for an attack to happen. Whereas on the opposite side, I didn't see a lot of that from the Vermont. Once the Vermont retreated and the Allies pushed into that territory, there wasn't much resistance. There wasn't much hesitation or losses or surprise attacks. It was usually defeat and move. There wasn't a push-up battle and a constant harassment. That didn't happen. And I feel like that's what ended up causing the Vermont to start losing guys and the British... And the Verma and the Soviet player to start, you know, 
getting more and more of an advantage through population. Um, but anyway, let's look at damage and kills. Overall, Panzer, Burger got more damage. Fireflies, I, I guarantee. And kills, although slightly. Losses, the Soviet player. But again, if we're going by a two, Soviets, of course, going to take more losses. Because that's how their faction is designed. Their faction is designed to lose so that they that way they can gain. Um, the perfect example is the T-34. Sacrifice one for the benefit of all. Uh, Wench was the best player via damage, but slightly edging on kills was Gub. They both did okay, but as you can see, Gub definitely took more losses. And again, just by the final final count, he lost what three elephants? It was two or three. It was I think it was three elephants. I I could be wrong. No, two elephants. Okay, so yeah, he lost a lot. And then armor wise, with this guy, yeah, he lost a decent chunk of armor. So yeah, playing to your strengths and weaknesses. And again, uh, is I feel like what you need to do, and I feel like a combined Vermok army would have been able to hold back the Allies and laying down traps and stuff like that. You had more than enough munitions for it, so I'm just curious why you didn't do that. Especially because again, you could have rapidly done it through a half track, which you ha which you could have deployed, but never did. Uh, I mean, Wedge had a half track, but I mean, his doctor didn't allow that. And actually, the super close air support would have probably been helpful. Um, to really fight a lot of that medium armor. I, you kind of, I, you were the opposite case. We used a lot of munitions, but I never really saw the Panzer Grenadiers all, you know, used all that effectively. So that's, that's me. In any case, that's the recap for this game. Remember, if you want to send in your own replay, you can do so via my uh, Gmail or my Facebook, both located on my YouTube channel. Also, I thank my Patreon supporters like Chris, Leo, Tim, Sean, and uh, pretty much everyone else who supports me on Patreon. So thank you guys so much. And if you just want to uh, help me out, you don't have to do Patreon. Just like and subscribe. In any case, this has been GrayShot117, and I'll see you next time.